Thank you for joining me on this Thursday afternoon as I sit down here and have my last puff of medicinal cannabis that I have. I'm still waiting on my prescription to arrive. And uh, on that note, I want to talk to you very briefly about what it's like to live with uh, major pain. Uh, many uh, people in our group infected blood Australia. Uh, there are thousands of people around Australia who've been infected and affected by contaminated blood transfusions. I'm one of them. And uh, we get left with a whole load of, uh, you know, uh, problems as a result of having had either HIV or Hep C or both. Uh, many people in our group have got liver cirrhosis, liver cancer, or other type of cancers that have come as a direct result of their infections from, from blood. The worst of the blood supply, if you've watched my videos, the worst of the infections happened before the 2000s. However, we've had people who've contacted us in recent times saying that they were infected from blood transfusions as late as 2018. What a scandal. You'll never hear about that on mainstream media. You'll never hear about us on mainstream media. You'll never hear about Australia's deadliest medical scandal on mainstream media. Anyway, I'm heating this up today. I've come down here. I nearly didn't get down. I can't walk very far. Um, my, uh, I saw my uh, doctor that prescribes the cannabis and that was almost two weeks ago. I was in terrible pain. I've got a, basically a, a busted neck. Uh, my neck bones are degenerating. I've got problems with my bone marrow. And I've got cry, is it cryobulimia or blood clots and blood circulation problems as a result of this raised cryoglobulin that I have on account of my tainted blood. So it's a really painful. I've been through a lot of pain in my life, but the, the, some of this pain I've had lately. Uh, my blood has failed, my muscles fail. Uh, I can't go to the toilet when I need to, so it's, it's just shocking. Um, or sometimes it, I can't control that side of things, so it's, it, it really affects you. <laughs> but um, I saw my cannabis doctor two weeks ago, and uh, you have to pay $80. You talk to an idiot who doesn't know anything about the medicine, and uh, you, get, you generally get a, lot, a lecture about, oh, it's very addicting, it's very addicting. It's like what the cretin doesn't understand is, is that without cannabis, I can't move my muscles or go to the toilet or go to do anything, okay? So I've got major nerve problems. So after the lecture, talking to a terminally ill person, lecturing him about addiction, after you, after you get that, you then, I've been waiting two weeks to get my prescription through the post because they have to send it through the post and it still hasn't arrived. So what was I supposed to do? It now won't get here till probably next week. And then I have to find a pharmacist. Not every pharmacist will dispense it. They're very few and far between, and they can take up to a week to two weeks. And I have to spend double as much as I would if I went to a street dealer to go through this shenanigans and to be treated like an absolute, yeah, piece of garbage, which is how we get treated down here. And so I decided, well, okay, then we'll, um, I'll go to the pain clinic at Royal Prince Albert Hospital. The same hospital that gave me contaminated blood as a kid, knowingly absolute bastards and it was past its use by date too it had no therapeutic benefit to me whatsoever right and they gave it to me anyway the bastards and left me with tainted blood as a kid and then of course didn't tell me and denied that it happened and told me i was crazy for wanting to get my blood tested for tainted blood what bastards so i had to go outside of the hospital and get tested and i was i was right so i went back to the pain clinic i've gone to several meetings there now with them and uh, after several meetings uh, and knowing that I'm in agony and not being treated, they came up with a prescription called Lyrica or something, but they had to tell me that it carried a suicide risk. So I said to them, well, okay then, so this will hopefully address my nerve pain, um, which is chronic. I can't sleep, I can't eat, you know, all this sort of stuff. And uh, they said, yeah, but you, I said, what will I do if I have, a, you know, suicide issues? And they said, I'll just contact your GP. So I went to my GP because I have to go to him to get the script that this pain clinic at the RPA recommended. So I go to him, he's on holiday. Then uh, I go to a replacement GP who's his stand-in GP and uh, this absolutely awful human being uh, introduces herself and gives me a long lecture about why um, she really shouldn't be seeing me because I don't have the money to see her, okay? Because my other GP, is the one GP who would do bulk billing in New South Wales. Uh, unfortunately, I'm you know, a disability support pensioner. I'm, you know, I, I can only pay 
through, through what the government uh, uh, affords at this stage. After having spent hundreds of thousands of dollars defending myself legally, I've spent all my money running this group. I think $400,000 on legal fees now. And uh, you know, fortunes, fortunes basically. There's more than, much more than that, but let's face it, after decades, I've never taken donations or anything like that. Um, I've never asked the people money. We've got lovely volunteers in the group, lovely kind people out there in the public also. Uh, really lovely people. Hi, Mary. <laughs> it was really touching the other day. Offered to pay for my dental work. We get no dental uh, here in Australia. And as I was explaining earlier, with contaminated blood victims, our teeth implode. If we were contaminated blood victims overseas, we'd get dentists, but not here in Australia. So I can't afford uh, the dentist at the moment. And the government won't uh, supply it. The, the, They've got an appointment for me, which is months away. I can't eat, I can't wait that long. And they said they might send a voucher, but they'd only send a voucher for one tooth and I've got two broken teeth. So one day a voucher might turn up in a few weeks, but it'll be no good to me because my whole mouth's got problems. So so then basically I, uh, I, d I decided that uh, this pain clinic, they had a doctor there who, uh, he seemed very fatigued when he'd see me. He was a pain specialist. And uh, he'd be dis he was distinctly lacking in compassion, actually, or empathy, not just for me, but for his job, I could tell. And I've been dealing with the healthcare system for decades, and I actually window shop a lot of these uh, mechanisms of our health system on behalf of members of our group, because they also have terrible experiences and go without treatment and are left in pain. And I, I felt with this doctor, yeah, that uh, absolutely outrageous, this doctor from the pain clinic, and I thought, you know what, nah. He's telling me, he basically, after listening to me for several hours, you know, knowing that my bone marrow failure was caused by an adverse reaction to a drug, he basically then comes out with, well, I've got a drug for you uh, and it's got a suicide risk and, you know, it's difficult to come off and all this sort of crap. Uh, but of course, we'll never ever recommend medicinal cannabis. Oh, no, 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 no. That's, that can't be of any effect to someone with major neurological problems, someone who's got hep C, someone who doesn't want to have toxins on their liver because they've got, he you know, hep C. Even though cannabis helps lower my viral load, even though it helps my, my body move and go to the toilet. Oh, no, 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 no. I've got to have a drug that his big pharma mates recommend to him uh, that, that could kill me. And then, of course, if I have any suicidal tendencies, which this drug can produce, um, I'm to see my GP. So I go to my GP, my GP's on holiday, and the other GP lectures me because I don't have the money to pay for her services. So I've made a decision. If you're kind enough to have sat through uh, this video, uh, the decision is I'm sorry, but yeah, uh, I nearly got, I only just got down here today. My uh, right lung uh, has stopped working properly. I was doing deep breathing exercises for relaxation for many months, the Wim Hof. And uh, that was a great, wonderful thing. I recommend that to anybody who's got neurological issues, multiple sclerosis. Unfortunately, I've got a structural issue with my neck, which is uh, basically my neck's broken. It's uh, wrecking my nerve, nerves on my neck. And so uh, I've had to stop my deep breathing. And this is my last bit of cannabis. Uh, which will help my legs work and then when that finishes which is it I'll get to back home and then I won't be able to walk for a while until my scripts turn up so I'll be bed bound till then in a shitload of pain and uh, I can, I'm not feeling uh, this thing can numb parts of my body and it could actually cause me to have a heart attack I'm getting a bit numb on my chest now so I could die any day so my message is to you is I'm walking away from the healthcare system in Australia that harmed me continues to harm me in fact, I was denied an MRI scan on my brain by the Royal Prince Albert Hospital for a year because I wasn't jabbed, okay? Oi! Oi! So, uh, we've got a dog coming down to join us. Holly. But, uh, g'day, Holly. Sorry, mate. No worries. Come on. So it's, that's beautiful um, Sydney uh, Harbour water. I drank it a couple of times when I fell in. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah, so anyway, uh, a, a good light-hearted moment on what was a serious point, but uh, I've decided I'm, I'm walking away from Australia's healthcare system and its GPs, who uh, no one will see me anyway, that no one bulks bill anymore. They won't take a pauper like me, even though I was injured by them, the Australian healthcare system, and even though it still covers up its medi deadliest medical scandal. Uh, fortunately, I had the strength to be a witness on an international inquiry, the Infected Blood Inquiry in the UK, which is going into their contaminated blood scandal. Um, I've made a statement, they've published that. What's happened down here has been criminal. The British know. Unfortunately, uh, it looks like help won't get hit down here in time. 
So uh, for, for anybody that, please, uh, please put, hold this government to account. Please, they, they, we, we should not be paying taxes and uh, having these people run our healthcare system is criminal. They're criminals, okay? They're covering up tens of thousands of infections that happened and happened through their negligence. And if you've watched my previous videos, you know, they then, when the first talk of contaminated blood happened in the Australian media in 1983, the advent of HIV, patients becoming sick with HIV, the Australian Red Cross came out and said, promiscuous homosexual donors should desist from, from donating blood, which inferred that the gay community is responsible for, for you know, the contamination of the blood supply. But of course, the Australian Red Cross and CSL and all the others never spoke of, of you know, the fact that it was actually them. It was their policy of collecting blood from infectious donors, not the gay community, but infectious donors, because they were uh, developing a hepatitis B vaccine in the 1980s with the American pharma giant Merck, and they had a major accident. A Chernobyl scale event occurred in Australia's blood supply because of that. Yeah, and because of their use of high risk donors, prison blood donors, all these terrible things, which Australia also exported, by the way. We exported blood to Southeast Asia and to Polynesia, infecting patients over there and still haven't owned up, owned up to it to this day. They're murderers, okay? There's real crime here. So uh, please hold them to account. Please, if you're watching this video, please hold the Australian government, the Australian Red Cross lifeblood, okay? And CSL, please hold them to account. And please hold to account the Haemophilia Foundation of Australia who uh, take millions of dollars of taxpayer money to represent haemophiliacs but have never once done what I've done for decades and that is actually speak up for haemophiliacs and call for an inquiry into 1400 haemophilia deaths. Or what about the Hepatitis Australia or Hepatitis New South Wales? They actively campaigned against haemophiliacs receiving financial assistance. We had a Senate inquiry into that issue in 2003 and the Hepatitis Australia and Hepatitis New South Wales campaigned saying that helping haemophiliacs who we now know and, and everyone around the world knows were knowingly given contaminated blood. It was knowingly done. And this Hepatitis Australia New South Wales discriminated against haemophiliacs and said it would be unfair on other people with viruses if you gave them help, even though they've been helped by other inquiries in other countries overseas, and even though children were knowingly infected. And they did that purely to, as, a, as a tactic for the Australian government, for the Australian Red Cross to sink us, and it cost lives. And it means that we're going without help today. And it means we go without doctors and medical help today. So I've had enough and I'm walking away. Okay, I'm walking away from it. I'll die on my own terms. I've got friends in the group uh, who've actually basically run this group. We've got, we're, they're, they're poor, people are poor in Australia. Our volunteers are poor. We've got people um, literally who've got no money, but they've given what they have to help me medically, okay? And I can't ask them to do that anymore. I want everyone to look after themselves and their families now. But what I would ask you, if you're watching this, please, as my muscles fail, you know, even without cannabis, my right throat stops me from talking. So with these last words before my body shuts down, I ask you, please, 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 hold this Australian government to account, please, for what they've done down here. This is Australia's deadliest medical scandal cover-up. There's thousands of us. They've ruined thousands of families.